What are we talking about today? Well, I would like to talk about hmm. dreams and dream journals. I had the craziest dream last night. <laughs> was it about I did. me? It was not about you. It's about okay. my husband. And I'm not going to okay. go into it right now, but it was a crazy dream. You can't mm. bring it up and leave me hanging. Well, I can't bring it up. I cannot. Okay, fine. <laughs> I was just, I was just, oh, um, dreams are interesting. Yeah. I've had two really interesting ones. Um, two nights ago, Friday night, I had a dream of my mother and we were at a table and she started slurring her words and, and acting real weird when she was, that's when we noticed something was wrong um, after her cancer treatment. That's when we found out it had gone to her brain. Oh. So for me, that moment was kind of a hearkening back to that. And I hate that I dream about that. But then next thing I know, she's before me. She has really long hair. It's kind of almost like a 60s flip. And it comes down and it's a little tousled and it's about down to here. And I looked at her and she put her arms out and she said, I'm fine. Oh and to me, that was sort of, she looked a bit like how I, I believe my mother would want to look when she comes back to me and me not remember her looking the way that she did. And I think that was why it started that way and ended that way. So she can say, this is your memory, but now let's, I want to see this. I want you to see this. Uh, so that was really powerful. And then last night I had a dream about, you know, my beloved Raven who had to send on into spirit um, back in December, the doorbell rang. And I opened the door, nothing. And I looked down, there's Raven. And she spoke and she asked if she could come in. And I'm like, this is your home. Of course you could come in. And she just walked on in and she just was there like, like she had always been. And I, but I've seen her a lot. I don't think she's actually left. I see her all the time. Oh, I just got so. a creepy idea. <laughs> I just got the, such a creepy thing idea. You know, um, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> this whole this whole podcast, I'm just not saying what I'm thinking. Here's the thing. If you dream or have an astral uh, projection or out-of-body experience and there's an entity asking to come in, don't let it in. Now, I'm sure this was Raven. Just letting you know I'm here with you. I'm home with you. But just in the future. <laughs> don't, don't, don't. But my grandmother's come to me that way, too. It's always the same thing. Whenever I'm going through something and I just can't quite figure it out and I'm racking my brain that night, I'll, wherever I'm living, the doorbell will ring. I open the door. It's my grandmother. And she'll say, I don't have a lot of time. I've come very far. Can I come in for a minute? And I let her in. She sits down and she said, I need to tell you this. And she'll blurt something out to me that makes absolutely no sense to me. I wake up. I write it down, move about my day. Month or so later, it comes true. It's like it, it is that that bit of whatever that I need to kind of piece something together. That's but interesting. Now, That's a I'm not letting anybody in. No. Now I'm not letting anybody in. No. <laughs> now I have to be like, Raven, I'm sorry. That's I why I didn't you, want you a second. You can't come in the front door. No, no it and sounds my gra like. Grandmother, you can't come in either. It sounds like this is something you have set up in the dream landscape to facilitate visitations with your loved ones. So I, I don't get a weird feeling about anything. I think it's really sweet. I really do. I did hear a story though about this guy who was having, like, he was having these dreams, these crazy dreams and astral projections. And he was having so much fun. And like when he would find himself in the astral, he would go on these adventures and like build these structures and houses and like just play and have fun. And one night, he had a dream and he was walking through his own house and he went lucid so he understood that he was in the dream and he heard a knock on the door and he opened it up and there was like a little alien dressed in a suit and like a little zoot suit kind of a thing and said, hey, can can we come in? Or, and off, off, <laughs> off in his backyard or front yard, there was this, a stranded like downed UFO, like their ship, their craft was, he could see it from the door and he said, hey, can, we've, we've had a bit of a, um, an accident. Can we come in? And he said, sure, come on in, in his lucid dream state, lets him in. And then for the next, I don't know how many months, he's terrorized by these interdimensional beings and shadow people and different entities that have entered into his consciousness and even into his physical place. Like he almost had a nervous breakdown. So the general rule in dream state, if we can all just remember, is we don't let anybody into the house because in dreams, your house is you. The house represents you. 
And so when you're letting an entity in or letting an energy in to your house, you're letting in, you're letting them into your experience. But having said that, I want to say and reiterate, I do not think that that's the case with you and Raven. And I do not think that that's the case with your grandmother, because it sounds like that's just the way it's set up for you. And also you are spiritually inclined enough and intuitive enough to feel the energy of the being in your dream. So you can feel that it's Raven and you can feel that it's your grandmother. And if you can trust it, that's perfectly fine. And it's okay. So don't be yeah, creeped with out. Raven. Absolutely. Like, like I, I just immediately was flushed with the feeling, yeah. the feeling that I got uh, anytime she was around me, anytime she snuggled with me, anytime she it. was just being Raven. So I was like, Oh yeah, that that's Raven. And with my grandmother, it's that's so, so Raven. funny. It is so Raven. And with my grandmother that, I mean, from, I always remember when she would come visit, I would always rush to the door to let her in. And yeah. she would usually say something like, and they, they literally, they lived in Ohio. We lived in Pennsylvania, but it was like a 40 minute drive. And she would always say, oh, we've come so far. And, you know, I'd let them in. <laughs> and so I think that just was sort of her way of reiterating something that I remember back from when we were children. But Right. But now I'm not letting anybody else no. in. No, well, I mean, anybody that's not your beloved loved ones that you can feel and recognize, like, just think about it. And if you can have the presence of mind, like, we just... Yeah. You saw that movie, Don't Let... Or Let the Right One In, right? I love that. Oh, my God. Did you see the original, though, out of, like... Yes. Yes. I forget where it's out of. Uh, it's, Sweden, I think it was. Sweden. Oh my God. The so original was great. And the, the U.S. one it was, was... But it was still very good. It was it's very, very good. good. Let the right one in, y'all. Don't Ugh. just let anybody into the house of your being. Anyway, dreams are awesome because <laughs> you can have so many experiences. And really, it is the easiest way for spirit to access you because, of course, the walls of your consciousness are down and you're not thinking about all the things that are that, that are happening in your life. You're not reacting to things. You're just pretty much energetically available. And so spirit can get in there and you can start having some cool encounters and who wouldn't want to remember those encounters. So today what we wanted to kind of talk about was like kind of how you can start having more evidential dreams, spiritual dreams, and how you can remember them and how you can work with them. So let's start with you, Brian. Like, what do you do to work with your dreams? What's your process? Well, I usually set an intention before I go to bed. So when I retire to the boudoir, there's meditation time. And, and then there's when, you know, and I sort of do that just to kind of raise my energy, commune with my higher conscience, all of that. But you are so enlightened. The end, and, and I cut cords, I cut cords every night towards the end. But then when I'm finished with all that, I then set the intention for dream time. And I, I always say that, that I'm open to visitations by, you know, loved ones that have passed on, um, be them furry or human <laughs> and, and, or spirit guides, um, inter any, any higher vibrational being that wants to connect, have a conversation, exchange of wisdom though, you know, me, I don't think I'm as smart. But, um, but I'm very open to that. And so I set that intention and then I always state, and I, as I'm drifting off, that is sort of my mantra, you know, that this is going to happen. And then I always say, upon waking, I will remember my dream in detail. Doesn't always work, but most of the time it does. And then as soon as I wake up, I grab my dream journal and I, Ooh, that's, I Ooh, open, wow. Super and special. I write it all down. Wow. And like, parchment or something is that it's, Egyptian it's parchment yeah and I write and I write with with a quill yeah because I'm I just I make it an experience do you are you but serious yeah. you write with a quill yeah. yeah oh my god in my dream okay. journal absolutely absolutely but um and I don't ever share it with anybody um okay. so y'all got a quick peek but that's yeah. chicken scratch because my handwriting is deplorable <laughs> but um but I, I but I write it all down and I just write it down I don't try to give myself any exposition. I, I just try to write the details. Like I was, I was in a room, it was darker, it was light. These are the colors that I saw. This is what I was feeling. Like I, I just, I don't say, I think maybe I was here or maybe I was, I don't do any of that. I, I just literally write down what happened. Sort of like you're taking notes at a meeting kind of thing. Um, I just write it all down, 
and then I move on. I don't even think about it. And, you know, maybe once a month I go back and, and sift through and just see if, you know, what the messages are. Are there recurring themes and, and ideas and, and symbols and things like that? And I'm not great with dream interpretation, but I've been able to sort of come up with a, a, a bit of a navigation system for my dreams. Wow. That's great. <laughs> That's pretty much everything that I would recommend for someone to do who wants to work with their dreams. Like first and foremost, you want to prime, get into your beady, you get all comfy and start to get into that hypnagogic state, that trance state. And even before you start to get into that tranced out state, you want to have the intention. Like you said, I want to have the intention to rendezvous with my spirit guides and my departed loved ones. And those are boundaries too, though, because you did not say, come one, come all furry entities into my habitat and, you know, and let's have, no, you said guides, dearly, part, dearly departed loved ones, angels, and that's it. Otherwise, just let me sleep. So that's good. You, <laughs> you had an intention and you state it, right? Or you do something to articulate that in your energy. And then you begin to prime and to prime means essentially prime yourself before you're falling off to sleep. You can say something over and over again. You know, I am meeting my mother tonight. I am projecting astrally. I am having dynamic spiritual experiences that I will remember. You can say something that affirms the kind of experience that you want to have. You should say that at least, I think seven times, seven for me is like the number, say that at least seven times as you're in that sleepy state and allow yourself, if you can, to drop off into sleep thinking those affirmations. And also occupying to the best of your ability a feeling state, like the feeling state of hope that you're going to have that interaction or the feeling state that you would feel if you did have that interaction. That's important too. What happens when you drop off into the subconscious or into the state of sleep while holding your intention and affirmation is that the subconscious, which animates everything for us, immediately sets about to start giving you what your affirmation stated. So that's what makes you much more likely to have those types of dreams if you fall asleep with the intention and having primed according to that intention. And then you have your experiences and then you wake up and you have a journal. And I recommend that to everybody. Have a journal, write it down, even if you don't remember much. If all you remember is a feeling like, oh, I know I felt like a sense of love. I felt really, really good. Write that down. Or if all you remember is the color, like remember the color pink or remember the color gold, write it down because the actual act of writing it down lends energy to what it is you're trying to manifest and grow. So the more you document, the more likely you are to dream and to remember your dreams, even if what you're remembering, again, is just a color, just a symbol, just a feeling. Over time, you'll start to remember more. And so people who often say, well, I just can't remember my dreams. I don't think I even dream. Well, first of all, you do dream. If you weren't dreaming, you'd be dead. Everybody, everybody dreams. It's a matter of recalling those dreams. And so working with intention, priming, and then documentation is a great way to start to remember your dreams and also to work with them. Now, one thing I do want to just offer for folks is a little supplement that I take called galantamine. Galantamine, G-A-L-A-N-T-A-M-I-N-E. Galant, sound it out. <laughs> galantamine. That's how you spell it. Right. Galantamine, Good. thank you. Galantamine, for whatever reason, makes you more prone to having dynamic, dynamic dreams. And depending on where you are right now in your spirituality, it can also predispose you to having things like lucid dreams and out of body experiences. It actually works. I will say that there's kind of a shelf life. Like when I first started taking galantamine, my dreams were off the charts and I was having out-of-body experiences. I have continued to take galantamine because it's good for brain health and I don't have as many out-of-body experiences or lucid dreams, but I still do dream vividly. So, oh, and one other thing, I know I'm going on, but let me just offer one other thing is mugwort. I don't know if you use mugwort. Mugwort do is- you know mm -hmm. you sent me mugwort? in a package way back when Did I? with so pocket thoughtful. Jesus and you said it with pocket Jesus as well because everybody so needs a pocket Jesus but Indeed. you had a big bag of mugwort 
mm-hmm. and and you go on about that. But I just wanted to point out that you that you got me started on mugwort. Good. Well, mugwort is a dried herb, although I think you can get tinctures of it, and I think you can also yeah. drink it as a tea. That yes. also makes you more likely to have dynamic spiritual experiences, dynamic dreams, and out of body experiences. And it also works, although. It is a, it's got a shelf life as well. If you get the dried herb, you want to put it in look, like a little pouch, slip that into your pillow slip and sleep with it kind of close to your face. And I think for about three months, it's pretty effective and it will help you to have better dreams. Just a couple of tips. You know, one of the things that I've always loved about dreams for me was a way to connect to loved ones that have passed on. And, you know, when you're young and you start talking about these things, people say, oh, that's just because you want to dream about them. But then, you know, there are things that become evidential. And I remember my mother and I always talking, and this was um, years ago, but even more so when my mom was diagnosed with cancer and we kind of had a feeling things were not going to end the way that we wanted them to here. And we always said, well, whoever went first, you know, we we have to communicate. And I always told my mother that I, I would love for you to communicate with me in a way that is just so us. And I said, but I don't want to tell uh-huh. you what, I just, I want you to do something because then, you know, then you plan for it, you know what I mean, right. in your head. And, um, and I, you know, went through her death and, and her funeral and all that. And I came back here to Florida and that night I went to bed and all of a sudden out of nowhere, there's, there's my, my door opens but they were French doors and I don't have French doors. They opened and it was like my house. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't my yard that they opened to. It was a beach. Mm-hmm. So it was like my house and I could look around and see my room. But then through those French doors was a beach and there was a bench. And it was my mother. Aww. She didn't say a word to me. She just put her hands out. We took hands and she led me to the bench. We sat down and the sun was coming down. And it was just getting ready to touch the water. And if, you know, from me looking at it, it was my mother here, me here. And all she did was just put her head on my shoulder as the sun went down. Oh, and then just as the sun went goodness. down and it went completely dark, I just heard, I love you. And I woke up. Oh, and that's the thing. Like when I say that spirit can access you more easily when you sleep, I'm also talking about loved ones. It's the easiest way for your departed loved ones to have a visitation encounter with you. After my mom passed, it was only three weeks before I had a dream about her. And um, it was so real and it was so beautiful. And that's the thing about a visitation dream. It just feels like it actually happened, like you actually had an encounter. There's just a different kind of a weight and meaning to a visitation dream versus kind of your crazy brain dump kind of a dream. And that's because it was an easy way for her to access me and it's an easy way for your mom to access you and so i just i love that's so beautiful brian uh, yeah i think about we love that our all the mommies. time yeah. and i use that image and now with the new dream that i had about oh, her God. you know that i'm fine um those are sort of my symbols that i use to help Excellent. facilitate that connection so when i want to mm. Oh, and I didn't even tell you, or did I, on the anniversary, the two-year anniversary of her passing, I was driving to work and I was listening to 80s synth pop. And I was just having a good old time, <laughs> listening to my 80s synth pop. And I get to a light, and so I stop the car, and my Spotify goes out. And I'm like, what? And then I'm trying to get it back on. It's not going on. And I look up, and a truck drives by with the name of our hometown, and it says the one and only underneath it and my mother i would call my mother and i would say i'd like to speak to the mother person and she would say i'm here the one and only and funny that i see this truck and i felt and i was thinking about her on the way into work and i'm like oh it's been two years blah 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 but i feel like that was a sign Mm -hmm. from my mom not that that was a dream but um but i just thought i'd share that's, that's wonderful. About well, but you were getting into something pretty powerful when you were talking about taking an image of your encounter with your mother, using it as a symbol in order to call in another encounter. Can you elaborate on that? Because that's actually a powerful technique. Yes. So what I do, well, so for me, I didn't realize it was a technique until I was sort of doing it and it was working and I'm like, oh, this is a technique. Then of course you and I have talked about it and I know it's a technique, but it, it is for me, it was a way to sort of get that feeling of my mother kind of rolling around and, and, and Mm -hmm. setting in, in that feeling. And 
I, I feel like it's almost like a symbol, like a key, like it that is. image is just sort of locked in. And that's what is like, it opens the gateway into that other space. And, and so I use that. And when I do that, I immediately, I feel my mother, I smell my mother. Aww. I'm like immersed in my mother. Mm -hmm. And as I step through wh whatever that is, whether it's the French doors that don't exist here or, or just into a space, but it always starts in my house. And then when I step through wherever it is, I'm in that other space, but that facilitates that that encounter that's that's great i call that a mind polaroid like taking a mental picture of something meaningful for you even if it's just a memory or this is a this is a memory that you had of it like an astral encounter because yeah. there's energy there and your heart is connected to it and so it's powerful already so take a mind picture of that use it as a symbol you can actually use it as a way to prime before you go to sleep if you want to have another visitation from your mother good stuff <laughs>